There we go. Well, we are um, continuing in a series um, called uh, Equipped for, for Every Good Work. And I wanted to just really bring us back to the basics of what we're trying to do here as a church, what, what the Bible tells me, what my role is supposed to be, um, is this. In, in Ephesians chapter 4, um, it, says, it says, so Christ himself gave, um, so there's, there, there's five different roles, okay? So Christ himself gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. You know, the word pastor is also the word shepherd, right? So uh, um, taking care of, uh, of people like, like sheep, right? So God gave anointed like five different gifts for the church to do something, right? It says God gave uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge uh, of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the full measure of the fullness of Christ. And, and it's interesting, um, God gave these specific uh, leaders and these gifts uh, to, to, to the church, you know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, not to do the works of the ministry, not to do the works of service. If you notice in verse two, it says, their role is not to do the works of service. Their role is to equip God's people to do the works of service. So this series we're, what we're talking about is how do we equip you, uh, equip his people, equip the saints for, for um, every good work, okay? And, and if this thing is working correctly, uh, the result, if you notice the, the following verses, it, it results, it says, you know, if the leaders are equipping and the people are actually um, serving and everyone is in the right seat on the bus, the result is this, is a so that the body of Christ, the whole church may be built up, like building up the church. And the word built up is the word edified. Uh, you know, it's just, you're, you're, you're building something. Um, and it says you're, you're edified, the church is built up and look at the results. Okay. You're built up in number one, in verse 13, it says, until we all reach unity in the faith. So, so you're, we become more united. Uh, we grow in our unity. And it says, um, and in the knowledge of the Son of God, we grow in our knowledge and, and, and our intimacy with, 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 with God. You know, if everyone's in the right places doing what God is telling us to do, we're growing in unity. We're growing in our knowledge, how, 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 how close we are, how much we know God. And it says, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So we grow in our maturity and we, we, we reach, um, we discover what God's purpose and his plan for us is. So we, we, we find out the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Um, and it only happens if we're all doing what God tells us to do. And this is the, this is kind of the fault, uh, you know, this, this is a fault that I've fallen into and, and people talk about the quote, the institutional church has fallen into. Like the professionals do all the work and then the people sit there and they spectate, they consume, and, you know, maybe they give, right? But that's not how the church is supposed to run. The church is God gives these, these leaders to equip the saints to do the works, uh, work of ministry. And when everyone is in their places doing what God is calling us to do, it results in the church being built up. And we grow in, in, in these things that we all want to grow in. We grow in unity. We grow in our knowledge and closeness to, to Jesus. And we grow in our own maturity. And we, we, we find out what our God's purpose is. And right now, what, what we feel, I feel like is a sense of dissatisfaction in the church that, you know what? We're not nearly functioning the way we're supposed to be functioning. Um, and, and like this is... Is the church unified right now? No. Are, are people growing in their knowledge and, and intimacy with, with Jesus? No. There's a lot of people who are struggling in their faith. You know, are, are people growing into a, you know, maturity? No. Like people, are we experiencing the fullness of, of God? No. It's like a lot of people are struggling. Like, why is that? So, so this is what I want to do. I wanted to, um, uh, uh, you know, if you have your, your, um, your PDF, the worksheet, I, I want to show you this, okay? 
let's go let's go with this okay so i uh what, what we're going to be talking about today is uh this passage but before we get there i, I want to talk about this thing okay um dvr i talked about this before like how do you change your life actually let me zoom up here a little bit i get this overhead camera let me zoom closer you guys see that okay like how do you change? Like, if you see something like, how do you change your life? How do you change an organization? Um, so life change, um, the elements, uh, there are three essential elements to change. I call it DVR. Um, it, it first starts with dissatisfaction, right? I taught, I taught on this plenty of times before, right? Dissatisfaction, the V stands for vision, and then the R stands for responsibility. So the, I, the idea is this, if you wanna change anything, you need these three elements. You need the element of dissatisfaction, you need the element of vision, you need the element of re responsibility. The first thing is, you know, before you change something, you have to be, there has to be a sense of discontent and dissatisfaction because you're not, you're never gonna change anything that, that you're willing to endure. If, if, if you're satisfied and content with the way things are, why change, right? So it starts with dissatisfaction. And so, but, but, um, after dissatisfaction, like there's plenty of people who are dissatisfied, but they don't change. You also need vision and responsibility. And I want to talk about a little bit of vision here. I want to give you a picture of a vision about the, the life and, and, you know, what God wants from us, right? So we talked about last week, um, we had this uh, um, uh, diagram uh, that really maps out the, the five marks of a disciple what i what i believe god is calling us to do and we kind of use the, the the great commission as a rough outline to describe it so if you're following along I, I want you to um uh draw these the these two diagrams my hope is this that the two diagrams that we're talking about the one that we talked about last week and the one we'll talk about this week is going to be your vision uh, of of what you want like like vision of what you believe God wants for you and for our church, okay? Um, the heart is more personal. Um, the circle is more collective together, right? So what does God want from you? And this comes from the Great Commission, you know, Great Commission, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, uh, it, it talked about when they saw him, some 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 uh, uh, believed, but others doubted. And then Jesus says, "All authority in heaven has been given uh, to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all I have commanded. And behold, I am with you always to the ends of the age." So, so roughly, there's five elements, right? Some of you guys, uh, you know, remember this. The first element is is having an authentic faith. So so it's a picture of the cross with the crown on it, that Jesus is inside our heart. The heart represents things that we care about, things we're committed to, that Jesus is in our heart, but he but we he he's the, the boss. He's not just the savior, he's our Lord. He says all authority has been given to me. So we recognize his authority. We submit to him. Um, he says go make disciples. Uh, there's this picture of a, a globe, and it's it's about a mission. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, I like to put that last. It just makes more logical sense for me. But he says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Right? It's a picture of of baptism, but it, it, uh, um, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the idea is that we have a faith that is we're just immersing ourselves fully in God. You know. Um, and it's just teaching them to obey. All I have commanded is a picture of the Bible, right? It's active faith, active obedience. And then there's a picture of um, fellowship, of doing life together. Uh, Jesus says, and behold, I am with you always to the very ends of the age. And he's talking about with you, um, plural, when you get together, when you, I'm with you um, in the church, right? And, and, and then the, the globe represents an ambassador's uh, mission. Right. This represents an adopted family, and this is an ambassador's mission. So that's what we talked about last week, right? That's just a review. This is a vision about what God wants us to care about and commit to in our hearts. What I want to do is I want to give you a um, another uh, a diagram vision about what how God wants us to shape um, our community, our our church. Okay. So how about this? I'm going to un allow you guys to unmute yourself. Um, 
and because I'm going to uh, ask for some 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 feedback and um, participation. If you know if your house is really noisy, you know you could kind of keep it muted. But but I prefer when we get together. It, it just makes it a little bit easier if you uh, the default is to keep your 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 microphone unmuted. So so yeah, if you can unmute, I, I'd love to um, get uh, you guys to 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 participate. Okay. So let me get uh, let me ask for. Can you guys? Did I unmute you? Can you guys allow people to unmute? Okay, okay. Uh, you could unmute. There you go. Let me ask for for three people to to read this passage of scripture. Um, someone read the first paragraph. Someone read the second. Someone read the third. This is from Acts chapter two. This is the picture of um, the first church. Uh, Jesus, you know, the Holy Spirit just came upon people. So um, uh, let's someone read the first part, someone read the second, so, and then another read the third. So go ahead and, and volunteer, just jump in there. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Okay. Next person. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Okay, one more, last person. Let me get one of the Baylisses because you're unmuted to read that. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying all the favor, excuse me, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Okay. So um, this is a description of what the church looked like when it first got started and it's a picture of, of of you know these people they just received the holy spirit and they started putting into practice with the the, the message of jesus um and and peter gets up to preach um and and all these people uh get saved so this is the church on the first day um that the church was, was birthed this is what it looked like okay and what i want to do is 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 this diagram here it it talks about 10 kind of, I think there's 10 things that describe what the church was doing. And our goal is to go 10 for 10 of these things. Like, like, let's just try to do what they were doing. Like, like, there's a lot of things that, you know, like, like, we're not in control of. And there's a lot of things that, you know, right now with this pandemic and all these different things, you know, um, the churches are having a hard time gathering and doing programs and, 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 but back then they didn't have any of that stuff either. They didn't have church buildings. They didn't have formal programs. They didn't have, you know, any official institutionalized, you know, religious structures. It was just people who were devoted to God. You know, they were uh, committed to loving God, loving each other and making a difference. And this is what we did. They did. Right. So, so um, I have this diagram, right? So the, the first part of the diagram is, is outside, the, outside the circle. And it's a picture of really what God was doing. You know, it was signs and wonders and the Holy Spirit. They were speaking in tongues. They were filled with power. The Holy Spirit came upon them with, you know, um, in tongues of fire. And it's things that it was, it was things that they could not control. And it was what God was doing, right? There was a move of the Holy Spirit. So we put that outside. And, you know, there's a star and an exclamation point because there's like awe and wonder, right? But the rest of the things um, were things that they were in control of, right? The rest of this description was things that they, they committed to. They were actually, it was, you know, it was their, uh, it was up to them. It was their responsibility, right? So what do you see? Like, what, what are um, some of the things that they were doing? Uh, in the in the early days of the church, what do you see here? So there's ten elements, ten essential elements. So um, go ahead and unmute, and we'll 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 talk about that. 
and I have di I have uh, icons for each one of these things. So, what were some of the things that they were doing? They were devoted to the apostles' teaching. Right, All right, devoted to apostles' teaching. So here's here's an icon of um, and it doesn't really matter what order you put in there. So there's a Bible, right? Right. There's one thing. What else were they devoted to, or what else were they doing? What were the elements of the early church? There's ten. What else? They were. Um, it says accepting the message and being baptized. Okay. So I think that's two things. Um, you know, he says uh, uh, first they accepted is is um, I'll put a picture of uh, a, a kind of U-turn arrow, which is repentance. Right, that's a sign of like return turning from your sins and and turn to our faith, and then baptize. Right, so this is a picture of baptism. So repentance and baptism. Right, um, though uh, they accepted the message, they were baptized. Okay, that's three, three out of 10. What else? What else do we see? Apostles doctrine and fellowship. Okay. Uh, so they were devoted to the apostles doctrine, apostles teaching. So we got that uh, fellowship. Um, this is the icon. Um, uh, we'll use the, the three people in the house, right? Some people use a heart icon, you know, just about loving one another, but fellowship, they were doing life together. Um, right. It says they were devoted to, uh, to the fellowship, right? What else? They sold property and possessions, right? To give sold to properties and possessions. Um, they were together, had everything in common, right? So, um, we will use a dollar sign, just oh. generosity, right? They shared with one another. They had, if any, as says. Uh, to give to anyone who was in need, right? So they, 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 yeah, they sold their own property to give to those, right? What else do we see? That's half of them. We got five more. They worshipped at church at the okay. temple. Yeah. So they continued together, broke, um, praising God, right? Temple courts praising God. Um, so there's a sign. Uh, this is the, the icon is, you know, uh, as a guy worshiping. The way I draw it is like you make a little lollipop and then you put little Pente Pentecostal praise hands on the on the lollipop there. So, um, yeah, worship, praise. OK, what else? What else do we see there? Breaking of bread. Yeah. Breaking of bread. Right. And they broke bread again in each other's homes. So, uh, you know, it's 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 eating together. But, you know, it's Jesus says, whenever you do this, do do this in remembrance of me. So it's bread. Um, but, you know, it, I, I take it to mean communion. Right. So bread and wine. OK, so when they got together, it wasn't just eating. They 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 recognized Jesus was there in the midst. OK, what else? So we got what? Uh, we got three more. Prayer. Okay. They devoted themselves to apostasy, fellowship, breaking of bread, and to prayer, right? So it's a guy kneeling, right? So prayer, right? Two more. Right. I'll give I'll give you this one. These were a little bit hard to find. But if you notice, it talked about um uh it says um apostles, you know, apostles teaching. Um uh, uh, many signs and wonders were performed by the apostles uh, with many other words. He, this is talking about Peter, he warned them. And it's it really talking about, I think it's, it's, it's uh, kind of obedient disciples, like leadership, you know, people who are just obeying God and following. So uh, the icon I use is I, I draw a little stick figure with a guy pointing in that direction with an arrow. He's saying, Hey, let's just, follow, let's go this way. So it's talking about leadership. People are like saying like Peter, was the first person that said, hey, let's just go out there and, and you know, let's do this, let's share the gospel, right? So it's a picture of leadership. And then um, and it says, and the Lord added to their number daily, 
those who are being saved, right? So there was a sense of multiplication and, and discipleship, you know, they're obeying. So this sense of, of like, hey, I'm pouring myself into other people and it's growing. So this idea of like this exponential growth, okay? So, so you, guys, you guys got the picture? This, this picture is about the 10 things that the early church was doing, right? And, and this, this, is our, this is our vision of what the church needs to, to look like, um, the church as in the people, like what we need to be focusing on, like doing these 10 things. Like nowhere here does it talk about, you know, programs and, and, and you know, having big buildings and, you know, fancy uh, worship services. It just talked about people gathering day by day in each other's homes. They're, they're, they're committed to the Bible, committed to reaching uh, out to the community, committed to, to prayer, uh, committed to, to being generous and, and committed to studying, the, you know, the Word of God together and obeying the Word of God, even preaching the Word of God. So the, this is the vision of what it looks like um, for us to like, like what, what they were doing back then, but it's a vision about what we could be doing, right? What we could be focusing on, right? So th this tool is something that I want you to keep in your mind as vision. Like this is what we're aiming for. Um, but, but also it's not just about um, uh, uh, a tool for vision. It's also a tool that could be used as a diagnostic tool. Right. So for us right now, if we were looking at this to say, OK, if this is a sign of health, if, if this is a sign of what the church looks like when it's obedient. How how are we doing? Like, how do we measure up to this? If this is the, the, the you know, um, if this is a diagnostic. So let's let's talk about that. And, you know, I love for you to come in and just give your, your thoughts. Like, what are we what do we need to change uh what do we need to do better what do we need to add what do we need to subtract what to do what do we need to commit to according to this right so just think about what we're doing right now just love to get your thoughts on that um i was just going to say that i think it's a little bit hard to have growth um and and you know, when we aren't meeting together, it's hard to invite new people to, uh, you know, to Zoom. Yep. So that's just my. So right now, like if we were, so another way of doing this would be um, here. I'll, I'll, do I have another empty sheet? Uh, I don't. Um, so another way of doing this is, okay, let me just get a, 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 a I'll put this side by side. We could do it like this. We could make a circle and we, we could say, um, which of these are we doing well, right? So Melissa says, we're not doing the, the I'll make this smaller so it fits in the same screen here. Um, Melissa says, we're not doing growth well. So we'll put the little symbol of growth outside of the circle. It's like, hey, we're not doing that well right now, right? Um, so what else? Yeah. So I think we're doing prayer and teaching well. Okay. So we'll put the little prayer guy, we'll put the little Bible inside, right? Um, like we haven't baptized anyone for a while. We'll put that outside. You know what? I think you guys have been very generous. We're still giving. Right. We were doing communion on Zoom. We stopped doing it because I wanted to save it for that. So um, I don't know how you feel about it. I, I always felt weird. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I'm looking forward to doing communion uh, together. So I would say that we're not doing that well. I think com communion and worship um, are difficult to do without being together. Yeah. So worship. Uh, those two are very um, yeah. like physical things. So yeah, and if we're kind of doing it but not great, maybe we could put it on the on the side or like on the line. Like some of us are connected. We're doing fellowship. Some of us are still connected. Maybe not in person, not in a house, but for, but like I see some of the guys way more now on Zoom 
and we share, you know, um, real intimate connections and prayer and deep discussion on Zoom. But it's not it's not the same as has, having a meal, but we're still, you know, we're doing, you know, so I would put that on the line, right? So. I think, I don't know if others would agree with this or not, but I think we see repentance and obedience kind of as personal things, not corporate things. Hmm. So maybe outside? I, uh, corporately, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I am very. Okay. Um, what are we missing? Is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What are we missing? Leadership. You know, I think we're doing leadership okay. I think, I think, you know, for for I think we we've made some progress in that. Um, you know, I, we've had some guys, two different groups, go through um, discipleship training, right? So right, so right now, what we're saying is we're we're four for ten, right? Um, or three and a half, three and a half, no, four four and a half for ten, right? Um, is where we are. So, but this is a vision. It, 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 it's a vision um, and a diagnostic tool, right? Um, if you notice, again, all of these things are are within our control. You know, the signs and wonders stuff, right? That's up to God. We can't control that. But all these things are things that we can control. You know, if we're out there sharing the gospel and inviting people, if we're, you know, these are things that are are uh, the are our responsibility, right? our responsibility so let me um uh any thoughts before i move on could you explain to me about leadership what you're referring to yeah okay yeah well it's it, it really is um i think I, I look at it as people making uh making disciples like we, we're talking about the apostles like yeah. people that you're multiplying uh uh workers right so there's 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 peter and then there's here's the the apostles were teaching and they were doing sign like so there are people who are like like stepping up and and you know they uh, these people were obeying jesus and they, they were uh, developing other leaders there was only 11 of them but all of a sudden there became more and more later if you read the book of acts you know uh, there's you know there's all these other people um they have um uh you know Stephen and and all these other folks that they started doing more more and more leaders there you know um yeah there's all these other people they start stepping up right so um yeah people stepping up who are yeah does that make sense Kirk did I say that the right way yeah I think that's a really good insight um there is one other insight here and that is the very last sentence and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So there's a sense in which we are cooperating with God that um, multiplication um, picture yep. is kind of inside and outside at the same time. Right? Yeah. So that's that was, hey, you, you're a theologian there because it says it's, we can't add to the number those who are being saved, right? But we cooperate. Right. But, but, but we could be out there like Peter sharing the gospel and asking people. Yep. to repent and get baptized and yep. we could be out there you know doing our part so that's what that's i mean like like yep. we're trying like i like what melissa says inviting like we yep. can't make people but we could be out there talking about it so that's what i mean so yep. this is kind of a sign for evangelism but I, I don't know how to make a icon for evangelism and discipleship you know yeah yep. so that's that's what that's for yeah but i think there's another <laughs> part that i think is in that sentence it says enjoying the favor of all the people in other words mm. there's there's a there's a part of the favor of all the people means that the witness the way in which they were living the way in which they were trying to become uh followers of christ becoming that as you talked about what the apostles are supposed to do to become um fully devoted followers of christ and what we looked at earlier uh, as to what the job of the leadership is that's a witness also to bringing yep. people in the way that they treated each other the way in which they cared for each other the way that they shared all of their stuff mm -hmm. together and then the lord added because of the way they lived their lives that's the yep. partnership part that i think is 
is there. Um, not just, and then the apostles' teachings is when you have the voice, I think, to those people who are drawn to us by the way, uh, by who we are. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great insight. There was a witness and it was very uh, attractive because uh -huh. there was 3,000 that got saved, right? The very next chapter, it's 5,000. And then they kept on growing where they says all of Jerusalem has heard, right? It just kept on growing and growing. And within a year or so, they had to leave Jerusalem because it got too big and then persecution uh, uh, got started. And it's just, you know, it just kept on growing. And, um, and yeah, enjoying the favor. Uh, it, you know, um, if you guys, this, I really encourage, like um, uh, one of the elders at uh, City Lights Long Beach has really encouraged us to um to watch the the tv show the chosen you know you can get on the i think it's called the chosen app or chosen tv um it's two seasons right now and it's 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 a um you know it's 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 an account it's not a accurate like like you know the jesus movie where it's every verse that is described it actually just tells the stories mainly of the disciples in the background and it talks it just shows uh very little of jesus actually shows more of the disciples and and from their perspective and personally it 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 brings it alive to me what it looked like that what jesus was trying to do in modeling these things and um i really want to encourage you to, to take a look at it um there's a roku app uh, you could watch it on on on, a, on um your phone also so the chosen tv um it's two seasons right now but it talks really about discipleship and it shows a picture about how they lived together and, and how they argued and how they, you know, got along. And, you know, it, it's pretty cool. Anyways, so uh, let me go ahead and uh, bring us to this part. Um, for sake of time, I'm going to skip a couple of these things. Where are we in the story, right? So in the story, we, we're saying we are 4.5 out of 10 right now. That's that's where we are, right? So So right now in the story... We're not terrible, but we're not that great either, right? But you know what? We have a vision. At least we have a vision about what we aspire to be. So I feel like, you know what? We got something to work on, okay? Um, the examples, we know what the examples are, right? So let, let me go ahead and we'll focus on the last part here. Um, what about this whole conversation gives you encouragement about, about even about this or that? What about it gives you encouragement? Does it encourage you to say we're four, four and a half out of 10? Or does that discourage you? <laughs> that actually kind of encourages me. I'm like, we haven't met for almost two years. Wow. I'm surprised we're four. Well, I'm surprised we're not like 0.5 out of 10, you know, mm. but I think I'm encouraged because this this first church started at a really low point for the church. I mean, Jesus had been crucified. Of course, he rose again, but um, the Holy Spirit did all of this work. Yep. And we have the Holy Spirit, too. And so even though we have a lot of challenges today and the church is kind of at a low point, we have the same Holy Spirit. Um, so that encourages me. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I, the reason why this is a star and a question or an exclamation point, because some, some people draw a picture of a fire or a dove, and fires and doves are very difficult to draw. <laughs> I don't know how to draw that, so I made up this symbol of God being at work doing stuff around us, right? So, yeah, God is at work still around us. But he's also at work in us. Right. Yes. I mean, ag agreed, 100%. We couldn't do any of this stuff without the Holy Spirit, right? So we have the Holy Spirit. I, what I, else? I think one of the things that um, is sort of, missing at that point that goes back to what the apostles were about was the unity and the um 
into the maturity of the, the you know, into Jesus. And I think the, the part that um, I, I would want us to make sure we're not missing is that we need to change uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit with the knowledge of, of, of what Christ was like to become more like Jesus, which mm -hmm. then gives our, our witness. And, mm -hmm. and so I don't, know how to I don't know how to judge that in the sense of if we're taking a look at how we're doing as a church, where is the, um, where is the, the scale of, yeah. of, of, are we mature? Are we becoming more and more mature to be Christ-like? Because the yeah. name Christian was a result of the Holy Spirit and the lives of the early believers living like Jesus, yeah. doing the things Jesus would do, loving yeah. God and loving others. Yep. So, so this is last week's, uh, you know, that we talked about these five things. So I feel like this is an individual, um, you know, that, that's why it's in this one. It's, it's, it's the, it's the heart. This is kind of like the, the self, right? So this is the, this is the Christian, right? And this is the church. I, right? I think the, the, the passage that you start off this morning with, which yep. was the Ephesians passage, right? Yep. Yep. So Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. Is so th this is the way. This, this, growth. Yeah. So equipping. We need to be equipping. Equipping to become. Yeah. You, equipping for these things. How are we? Yes. So but I would say we, this. I would say that. I would say, that. I would say this is, that's part of the leadership part, right? So. Our, I think it's part of the individual disciples' responsibility also to become more like Christ. Yep. That's the product. Yep. Okay. Because so, think you've got to, so we've got we to need to focus on equipping. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Okay. I think one thing that gives me encouragement is that God use, uh, works with people, God uses people. It's not like uh, the queen that says, off with your head. It's, <laughs> it's like uh, he is uh, very committed to doing a wonderful thing, making his bride, um, being a whole group of people like me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, fallen people. So... You know, Peter, just a couple of weeks ago, you know, he was going fishing. Um, Thomas was like, I'm not going to believe unless I, like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, I, 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 you know. And there's all these different people, right? They're fallen people. They're prostitutes. They were um, tax collectors, you know. You know, a, a, a zealot, again, in that show, um, the, the Chosen, they talk about the Simon the Zealot. A zealot was um, basically a terrorist like a person that what plotted against Roman and their assassins and one of, you know, and God uses these people to build the church. <coughs> so I feel like if God could use them, you know, we got a chance. Yeah. Very good. What else gives you encouragement? Anything else? That we do it together. It's not all on just one person. Yep. Yep. Everyone plays, right? It's like mm -hmm. the the all like the the all skate and the, the skating ring. Remember that? Um, we do it together. Don't remember that. The the, the last thing last thing is for me is the vision. Like I'm excited, even though it's like we're climbing Mount Everest, but we got a we got a map. It's like. I know it's a challenge, but okay, at least there's a plan, right? I'm encouraged that there's a plan, right? Something to actually measure ourselves is, you know, it's not random. It's, it feels like it's an intentional, right? There's a plan, right? So let me close with this and then we'll, we'll, um, we'll take some prayer requests. Uh, what is God saying to you personally?
about this whole thing? Is is God challenging you, speaking to you to say, hey, I, I want you to do this. I want you to focus on this. Let me, I'll zoom up here. So we can focus on that part. We like to say this, uh, write this in first person voice from God's voice to yours. Like, what is God saying to you personally? Is he challenging you to do something? Is he encouraging you? What do you hear God saying to, to you? Or maybe I could say, what is God saying to us? Maybe God's saying it to you to give to us, right? So put quotation marks. I have two things. Um, one is I feel that um, a lot of these things um, we can practice in, in our own homes. Um, and maybe that focus, um, you know, as we practice um, actually intentionally like breaking bread together as a family or um, even the growth part that that's, you know, the, a lot of the focus this year has been on surviving. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a time where we get to um, invest in, you know, our families and, and the people who maybe we're already in connection with. So um, this is like just an example, like I see Lee every day um, right now because our kids go to school together and we see like literally spending a lot of time together and you know we talk a lot about our what we're going through but we don't actually pray together and we could be doing that like we could change the focus of what we're doing a little bit yeah. to include that um i can't so, so melissa uh, uh say that from god yeah, yeah. saying it to you like how would you state that what do you hear god saying <laughs> melissa, so make that personal you, yeah, Melissa, um, you need to focus on the people you're already in connection with, like in terms of putting these things into practice. Yeah. How about start where you are? Yeah. I'm putting words in God's mouth. <laughs> start where you are. Yeah, that's that's great. Thank you. I 100% I agree. Like we've been waiting for something. It's like, hey, just start where you are. Okay. You said there was two things. Prayer. She said prayer. I, what was the one was with my kids and one was with people I'm already in connection with, but that's okay. much the same. <laughs> yeah, people. kids and then uh, others. Okay. Anyone else? You hear God challenging you? I I think. God's telling me, don't be satisfied with where you are. You still haven't grown into the fullness of Christ. Okay, great. There's more to go, something like that. Who else hear God saying something to you? Um, I hear God saying, like, you're on the right track. Just keep going. Anyone else? Okay, let me just uh, close it here. And so again, um, what we talked about um, is if we want to change anything, it, it, it starts with dissatisfaction. Even that's what Steve was talking about. Like if you're just satisfied with where you are, you're not going to change. So it starts with a sense of dissatisfaction, but but sometimes dissatisfaction alone, like it, it doesn't motivate. You need to have a vision, something to aspire to. And then once you have a vision, you need to take responsibility. Like, what is my part? Where am I going to get started? Right. So I feel like that's what we're doing. Um, the the how we're doing this is we're going to try to gather together to worship at least once a month. You know, there's a lot that's not in our control, but we could do that. We could do we could try that once a month. 
there's a lot that's not in our control, you know, but we're going to try to gather in uh, our um, doing home church meetings uh, twice a month, right? Um, we're going to take communion there together. And so that's that's where we're going to get started. Um, we're going to do the kids thing to, to pour into our kids. So so that's that's where we're getting started. Um, I'm going to um, probably next month, um, we're going to uh, start planning to have uh, monthly uh, dinners like we're going to be hosting maybe like um, like one Sunday evening a month, um, like having um, like three or four different homes um, that are hosting dinners like dinner for eight or dinner for for 10, you know, just and we're going to just try to do that. Right. So so I, I feel like that's that's kind of the next step. Like we need to do something um not just wait like we've got to take some responsibility so um yeah that's where we are let me close with that um let's see uh at this time uh i'm going to um uh be praying for people so we'll we'll, we'll um pray let me go ahead and stop this recording and then uh, i'll pray <laughs>